Back again on the number two rat rod. Uh, I've had, I've wanted to do an elliptical leaf on the front. It's traditional with these trucks, especially with this suicide front end. Um, but I've been hesitant because it's going to be a lot of work. I've been sitting here looking at this for two or three weeks now. And I, I haven't engineered up anything else in my head. I really think that's the way to go in the front. So I'm going to give it a, take a crack at it here. Give it a try. So uh, there's no guarantee this video is going to end in success. This could be another one of my epic fail videos. But I'm here to show you the truth. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and make it look like I'm some sort of genius or anything. I'm, I'm completely making this all up as I go. So no shame in it. It's the way the, the hobby is. So. What I'm looking at here, I've got the leaf spring setting up here, and let me get you focused here. Oh, camera. This is a leaf spring pack from a Tamiya semi truck, and it has the largest leaf removed. This is the pack normally. It has the eyelets on the end, and it is three leaves. Well, that's not actually the same pack. That still has three leaves. Doesn't have any eyelets, so it's a different pack. I think that might have been a uh, aftermarket semi truck leaf pack but it does have the rivet in the middle holding them together so I have to figure for that later so right now it is just sitting on the front axle and my idea for this is to just take the Dremel and cut notches on both sides of the step up here because this is a one centimeter drop axle it's a $50 axle that I had to buy on eBay so <laughs> it's part of the reason I've been so hesitant because I need to cut it and cut notches in it about oh, maybe a quarter inch not quite and slide the leaf spring in so it's locked in and then I'm gonna have to braise something off of the end of the rails here that will clear my steering horn come out over this and allow me to bolt with u-bolts to the leaf spring all while keeping everything at the right ride height <laughs> so yeah this is this is why I've been sitting back and thinking about this for so long because it's it's very tedious and it's gonna be very tedious <laughs> so I have done a few marks here I've got this square this is tiny tiny square tubing there's not even tubing it's square rod I don't even know where I got this I'm sure I got it at Home Depot or something but I've had it for a while I'm going with something small like this hoping I can put it in the end of the frame rail and braise it to both upper and lower part of the C of the rail and the side. And braise it from the inside. And it can, I can angle it forward because there's, then they can see better. There's limited space here. I've got maybe a little more than a quarter inch between the end of the rails and the back of the axle. So I've got that much space to work with. It does need to come forward a little bit, but it can't come too far forward. Now this suspension isn't going to have much flex. These leaf springs are pretty stiff that's why ultimately I went with the die cast diesel engine because it is a bit heavy and uh, uh, you see in the background there I've been mocking up with my old RC four-wheel drive disruptor transmission and I should have room for a motor and the transmission to fit in the floorboard of the cab um, this is probably will not have much interior at all because it's a closed cab yeah, closed cockpit sorry I'm trying to say three words at once uh, but that's, yeah, that was just daydreaming. So I'm going to work on this front. I'm going to try to bend this. I've got a uh, vice-mounted tubing bender. So we'll see what it does with this square. <laughs> I have no idea if this is going to work at all. It might actually work better, but we'll take a crack at this, try to cut me a piece out, and then we can start looking at the height that we're going to need and the ride height and all that. All right, guys, so this is my, my tubing bender. Um, lost my piece of metal here. Have a hard time getting around here in the shop with the camera. <laughs> really need to. Uh, my house is big enough. I can move my bedroom to the other side where it's actually supposed to be a bedroom and expand my shop. But uh, it's just hard. I like my space over here. So this thing I've I found. It's better. It's really hard to set lengths. Like I have a mark on here. It's maybe three quarters of an inch. I'll never get that lined up when I roll this around. If I can even remember how to do it by hitting the camera. So the best thing to do is to focus on the length. Like I need two bends and I need an exact distance between them. So I'm not going to worry about the ends. I'm just going to focus on the middle distance 
which is still going to be a challenge and I'm probably going to have to bend this three or four times to get it right. This thing's all rusted up. It has different dies that you can put on it. Can't get this sucker down on there. That's the deal. Just that dirty. That's as far as it's going to go. All right. So we'll make the first bend here. And then we'll move back over to the bench and look at the card. And so all you're doing is, is you're putting it in a bind. I've got the small die here in the middle because I want a tight curve. The large die on the outside just to fill the gap. And it won't stay down flat because this thing is all crooked. All right. And then it puts it in a bind behind this one and we'll bend it around this edge. We'll see. This is solid rod, so it's not super easy. Okay, it didn't break. <laughs> All right. Got a pretty good angle out of it. Well, let's take it over here and try to figure out our distance. Okay, so back on the front end here. I'm looking at something. I can get around the tire. Well, looking for it to set like that. So you can see where my mark was on there. And this is way too tall. It's going to set a lot lower. It probably really only needs to be about that high. But like I said, we'll worry about the... Uh, Links here in a minute. The camera is all in my way. So I'm going to try eyeball this. Hopefully, that's where it needs to angle down. So we'll have to make our bend further. So I'm going to go ahead and tinker around with this because it may take three or four tries. I don't want to bore you all with me on a bench vise cussing at metal. So <laughs> I'm going to work on this. I guess so after some cutting and bending and cutting and cutting. <laughs> this is what I'm looking at here. I got the the hoop bent and it's wedged in nice and tight on the front frame rails. It still allows me all my steering clearance. I might could even lower the steering clearance down a little bit. And I cut a piece of this flat bar and I'm going to braise it to the hoop. And then I think I'm just going to drill three holes. I'll have one for the rivet in the middle and um, one on each side and just run a bolt through. Uh, the U-bolts will look cool, but uh, you've got to have something. Uh, uh, it's just more more holes to drill. It's not wide enough to bolt them through that way. And I don't have like a, a uh, bottom plate to run them through the other way. So I think that's the way to go. It's not quite as fancy as I was hoping, but simple is better, maybe. So I am going to start stripping everything off the front, um, try to protect the motor, and I'm going to go ahead and braze all that stuff on there. Um, not sure yet about the plate, how I'm going to go about that. It's getting late, so I'm not sure how far I'm going to get on this tonight, but I'm gonna, i got to at least start, so get the uh, torch out and get going. So here it is so far. I cleaned up the excess of the braze. It's not perfectly straight. Nothing ever ever is when you use that much heat. It just kind of does what it does. Um, straight enough. Just trying to make sure it is level this way before I cut into my $50 axle here. It's hard to tell. I think it's level, but I ground a little more off one side so it looks like it's offset to the eye. It's playing games on me. 
It's actually pretty straight. It's just that ground this side down a little heavier. So I've marked on the axle and with a sharpie. So now I gotta take a Dremel and cut into the axle. Scary. Uh, all right, let's do it. All right, guys. Fingers crossed. Not, why did I go so high? There we go. Oh, oh, awesome. Just a hair too high. Oops. All right. Now that's perfect for the ride height, but it, the leaf spring's just a little too short for me. How's it gonna work? I think maybe once I bolt it into the mount that it'll flatten it out some and it'll fit perfectly in there i'm i'm pulling at strings here maybe maybe just maybe we win and get lucky with this if not then i'm gonna have to grab another leaf and cut it just a little bit longer and yeah we'll have to see if maybe that'll work i think that's what i'm gonna go ahead and do so I'm going to go ahead and mark these leaves, cut it, the ends off, and we'll try this again. Alright guys, so with some tinkering around, I've cut up about three or four leaf springs. Mm, excuse me. It uh, works. I need the, I don't know, the, the only way it works and gives me any spring is that there's a little bit of gap left. See, like it popped out of the groove now, so there's no flex. So I've got to get a little bit longer leaf spring for the main spring. Why well, didn't stay in there at all now? It's a mess. Um, there we go. Trying to keep the front end centered. I may I may have to do some sort of track rod to keep it the the side arms parallel and got dirty. Keep it parallel with the frame in order to keep the leaf spring where it goes. Now that alone it rolls now the back is still bottomed out on the frame rails but having the front up at that height has brought the chassis up just enough to clear <laughs> so uh, maybe an adjustable rear suspension something like that still gonna tinker with the front here so i don't get too far ahead of myself but got a little bit of tiny little bit of flex yeah, I need a little bit longer leaf spring. I, I cut up a couple. The the second set that I did was a uh, I don't know. It only had one hole in it, so that wouldn't work. I needed the three holes to mount it the way that I wanted to mount it. So I don't know. That's where we're at. I tried de-arching it a little bit. It helped some, but it's I don't know what it's doing right now. So, why is it pulling side to side now? I don't know. It looks good. It's not going to work great. But, uh, yeah. I've got full movement. There's no interference with my servo horn. Um, the only thing now is going to be mounting a grill. The servo is going to be in the way of that. So, but we figured our way out of this hole. We'll figure our way out of that one. Um, let me turn around here to the side. You can see the body's just barely off the ground. <laughs> Scrapes a little bit on the unevenness. So, yep, there we go. Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, it's late, I'm tired, I can't think. Put words and together and make sentences and stuff right now. So, I'm gonna end it. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. And, um, not sure yet what we're gonna do next. Must be able to still got a long way to go, so... Come along for the ride. I'll see you all in the next video.